Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. The Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. How many people? How many people did Peter Piper pick these pickled peppers for? <laughs> So today I want to talk about a book. But before I get into that, I want to give you a little backstory to why I have this book in my possession. <laughs> a few videos ago, I made a video about this book I had won from a Twitter contest from the indie author Ksenia Onski. I will link that video in the description if you are curious about it. But after I made that video, Ksenia, out of the goodness of her heart, sent me two more of her books. So yeah, one of which is my absolute favorite of her books that I've read. And the second, which I will be talking about today, is a book I hadn't actually read yet. And so that's why I'm making that video first. And then I'm hoping to make a video later on about my favorite book of hers. So stay tuned in the future for that book. So the book I will be talking about today is Rosehead. Now I don't like it personally when people talk about books or movies and they just give away the biggest spoilers possible. They're like you know, you get to the end and you're like, wow, Darth Vader is Luke's father. Who would have guessed? If you, if you didn't know that by now, I'm sorry. Also, where have you been living? Without much further ado, let's get into this book. This book is about a 12-year-old girl that goes by the name Lilith Bloom. Do not call her Lily. It is Lilith. She is an imaginative, spunky, intelligent girl who loves big words, she loves Sherlock, and she loves her dog, which happens to be able to talk to humans. Her dog is a whippet, and if you don't know what a whippet is, it is this. It's not a whippet ant. No, it's, a, it's an actual animal. She is on her way to a family reunion in Berlin with her father and mother and her talking dog. Her grandfather is, I don't even know what generation he is, but a generational rose gardener. He has the most beautiful rose garden. It smells amazing. It's the best in all the land, basically. And it's, it's a generational thing. They go, they pass it down and Lilith's father Daniel did not pick up this family trade. Instead, he went on to breed whippets, um, which he is strongly passionate about. And so they're there at the Bloom Mansion, which is surrounded by the Rose Garden. And I would like to read the first line, first sentence of this book because it kind of gives, well, just because. Lilith Bloom had a particular feeling that the Rose Garden wanted to eat her. That's right, folks. This Rose Garden in this book is not a spoiler. Eats people, which not what you expect. And as the story progresses, it seems that Lilith is the only one who is becoming more and more aware of this horrifying fact. Yeah. Well, along with her with it, whose name, by the way, is Panther. She tries to convince her family of this. And as you can imagine, telling them that the roses outside in the garden want to eat everyone doesn't really go over that well at all. But the thing that really doesn't help this situation is that at age five, Lilith was diagnosed with severe ADD What's that? Oh, sorry. Um, ADD, ADHD, borderline Asperger syndrome, um, potential placement on the autism spectrum, panic attacks, anxiety. So for her to say, guys, 
There's a rose garden outside and it eats humans. It's gonna eat us and we should do something. Um, <clears throat> yeah, no one really believes her. I started to wonder, would this book end with the fact that it was all in her head, none of this happened, or was this actually real? I'm just gonna be honest here, I was wondering this. I'm not gonna tell you so that you will, you know, the whole spoiler thing and everything. <laughs> what I got from the end of the book is the fact that humans instinctively fear death. We fear those monsters in life that threaten our lives, that, that scare the crap out of us, and we will do whatever it takes to preserve ourselves over everyone else. But at the same time, we have the very opposite. We have this love for the people around us that can be so strong at times that we will give up our lives for them. We will sacrifice ourselves to protect everyone that we love. And that love isn't logical. You can't always explain it versus being able to explain why you're scared and why you did what you did to protect yourself. When you have that love that you'll do whatever it takes and sacrifice something important to you, sacrifice even your life. And the thing is you see it throughout all of life. There are stories of that mother cat that will run over and over into a fire to save every one of her kittens. That instinctual thing that we have outweighs that fear, that need to preserve your life. And <laughs> wow, that got really heavy quickly. But that is what I got out of this book. It was a reminder that there is a lot of bad happening around us. There's a lot of hate, there's a lot of fear, and there's a lot of individual fight for themselves. But at the same time, there's a lot of love and there's a lot of sacrifice. And all of that cannot be overshadowed by the bad we see. And we have to remember that. Look for the good because it is out there. And be that good, be that love that you want to see in the world. If you want to read a book about roses, that quite possibly have and will eat humans. <laughs> this is a book for you, Rosehead by Ksenia Onski. And also I just suggest checking her out, period. Her social media I will list in the description, uh, list her Twitter and her website. And also you can just find her here, right here. Before I go, there's one more thing I want to do. I want to take it to the source. You know what? There's a rose bush right outside. If you're willing, come with me. We'll go interview this rose bush and see what happens. As you can see, I present you a rose bush. Though it may not have any roses on it currently, it makes it no less a rose bush. So, here we are. We're at the, the root of the whole thing. How do you feel about the dark, almost horrific viewpoint that Rosehead book has taken describing rose bushes as monsters? What is your comment? What is your feeling? No comment? Um, are you sure? You have nothing to say. Um, okay, we're just gonna, um, go inside. Yeah, so, yeah, there you have it. <laughs> well, you saw it here first. If, if, if you want to, you're welcome to avoid rose bushes for a while. <laughs> That's all the time I have for you today. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up, which just basically means click the like button down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I want to thank you, Ksenia, so much for your generosity with the two books, the three books. And I hope you enjoyed this video as well. Remember to keep 
being awesome by being you because there is no one else in the world like you. You are a beautiful snowflake in the, in the storm of snowflakes. There is no snowflake like you. You are one of a kind. Beautiful. I love you. I'll talk to you guys later. Cheers! Honey bun, sweetie pie, I'm gonna go check on what the neighbors are up to. Did he just finally mow her lawn? Thank goodness it's beginning to look like a wild jungle on steroids. Did the Jensen's get a... They got a new car. I thought they couldn't afford a new car. Is she talking to a bush? Is she talking to a rose bush? She is. Henry dear, I tell you, these millennials, 